2018 Accord is available with either a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline for making 192 horsepower and 192 pound feet of torque or a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline for making 252 horsepower and a very on Honda 273 pound feet of torque. The latter replaces the 3.5 liter V6 that's been in Hondas for more than 20 years. It's based off of and built alongside the 2.0-liter turbo engine found in the new Honda Civic Type R. These two turbocharged engines don't feel like Hondas of old, with sky-high redlines and an EMA low end power. If anything, these dorky engines lose some steam up top. Still even the base engine feels more than adequate in most situations. The 1.5T comes paired with one of the best CVTs around. It doesn't have the loose band-like power delivery of other CVTs. The 2.0T cars come with an all-new 10-speed automatic that's light year is better than the old 6-speed automatic in the old model or the 9-speed auto in some other Hondas and Acuras. It acts like a short ratio 6-speed with 4 long overdrive gears. It doesn't feel busy or confused like some other transmissions with similar gear counts. Mostly, it's forgettable in a good way. A manual transmission is available on the Sport trim with both engines, something Honda should be commended for. The Accord Sport 2.0T with the manual is a genuine blast to drive. The shifter is short and precise, though not quite as slick as the one on the Civic. The pedals are placed perfectly for heel-toe shifting, and the entire driving position makes moving from the wheel to the shifter quick and easy. Honda really nails it with the seating and steering position. The new Accord rides and handles well too, especially with the Touring model's adaptive dampers. The ride is a little firm with the larger wheels, but it's not terrible. I'd like to get it back home on Michigan roads to really see how it handles rough pavement. For the most part, it soaks up bumps and cracks with grace, sending muted vibrations to let you know what the wheels and suspension are up to. Even the fixed suspension is better than the last Accord. The steering is fine but nothing to write home about. It's numb but has good weight. Really, it's only as good as it needs to be and isn't so devoid of life that it sucks out some fun. This is the best looking Honda since the S2000. Pictures don't do this car half the justice it deserves. It's a sort of grown-up version of the design found on the current Civic, dropping all of the faux intakes and vents and smoothing out the edges. It's both wider and lower than before though it's slightly shorter than the outgoing model. The wheelbase is up 2.1 inches, helping both rear seat legroom and the overall proportions. Shorter overhangs give it a sporty stance, and the sloping roof line reminded a number of us of the Audi A7. The wheels are some of the best on any Honda in years. The interior, like every Honda, is an exercise in both refinement and usability. No one does interior packaging quite as well as Honda. The overall design is simple, clean and open. It's far less claustrophobic than the Toyota Camry or Ford Fusion. All of the materials feel premium for a car in this segment. The fake wood trim on the Touring models looks particularly good, though the plastic accents on the lower spec models are nice, too. Most of the buttons and switches have a nice mechanical click when you use them. The new steering wheel is a joy to hold with smooth grooves for your thumbs and easy to reach paddles for the shifter. It feels just the right diameter for a car like this. There's a deep center console large enough to hold two big gulps and my wife's Yorkshire Terrier. Higher trim models have a wireless charging pad. I wish there were more than two USB ports. Everyone seems to have more than one or two devices on hand, so it's disappointing that Honda didn't include at least a couple more ports. There's no doubt that this is the best looking and best driving Accord that Honda has ever produced. Sure, the new engines mean the car doesn't quite have the same character as older models, but it's just different, not bad. Front to back, this car is really something special. It's not only better than the last Accord, it's as good or better than everything else in the class. There's not one fundamental flaw or glaring issue that Honda left in. All of the criticisms of the past few years about complacency and a lost focus seem to have been addressed. 
The new Toyota Camry is a truly great car, and one that's fun to drive for the first time in decades. It offers more power from its V6, but there's no manual available on any trim. The same goes for the Ford Fusion. Those might be better options if you really care about straight-line performance. Both were on hand to drive and, after a back-to-back -back comparison, don't feel nearly as well-rounded as the Accord. The Camry comes close, and for some, the details might lead you towards Toyota. I'll stick with the Honda.